Uh, my name's Sandy Rosenberg, by the way, and uh, I'm not a, a, um, I have been a producer on a few films. I primarily am a uh, psychologist, and I started a company called Media Research Associates a number of years ago, uh, consulting and working with, helping to develop characters and things like that, and evaluate films and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, I was working with uh, Robert Young on uh, one of his projects. So I, I'd met Robert actually through Mill Valley uh, with, uh, when he was working with Eddie Olmos in projects. And he, and Robert Young, it's Robert M. Young, he's like 94 now or something like that. And he's kind of like considered to be like the grandfather, the true OG of the independent film world. And uh, he, I got to meet Rob and be informed about Rob's work through him. And, uh, you know, I know Rob thinks very highly of him, and I've been hanging out with him. Rob showed up, and I said, he told me about Rob's work, and I said, oh, I need to see this. I need to, I need to see his stuff. And then I met Rob, and then I, uh, Heat and Dust, I think I was at when, Sundance when that screened, and I said, wow, this guy is really something. I mean, he really... He, he's the uh, one of the few filmmakers that's working in this way and working with actors in this way. And then I realized that he really loved getting, and Robert Young was like this, he loved getting young people involved and teaching them how to do cinema verite, you know, in an interesting way. And then Rob evolved over time and started making these movies with local people and telling local stories and doing it in his own unique way. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's informed by John Cassavetes and some of these remarkable filmmakers that we have very few of now. But I'm hoping that um, a lot of these people who, like yourselves, who get to work with Rob, uh, catch the spirit of that kind of filmmaking uh, and uh, spread that. Because I think telling stories in that way is what Rob is a genius at. And as a psychologist, um, I love the way he brings these things out to people. And somehow his magic is he can show it on the screen. Now, it doesn't always work perfectly, but nothing in life ever works perfectly. And that's part of what I like about his work. It's, it, the warts are there, you know, the suffering is there, the joy is there. And I especially love the fact that he works with a lot of people who are not trained actors, you know and mixes that together in a very interesting way. I, I don't know who else works that way these days, um, but I know that he does. And I think that that's remarkable. I hope, you know, he's getting older and, you know, as we all are. And uh, so that's his legacy. And I'm glad he's still out there. And I hear, I haven't seen Fault Line yet, but after hearing from Don about Fault Line, I look forward to seeing it. And I'm sure that it's brilliant. Do you see a previous film of the Nomad Trilogy, like Center Divide or Aircut? Uh, yeah, I don't remember that. I remember the... It's a story about it, young poets on the motorcycle who try to get away yes. from the credit card society. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And I saw um, all the one he did in the... Uh, that I really liked was the one he did about the homeless people in San Francisco. Uh, Nine and Nights. Yeah, Nine that, and was, Nights. that was just brilliant. Yeah, can you say something about Nine at Nights? Because I'm going to cut out all of my voices. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I, you know, I, I just thought that the way he told the story and the people he got to be in it and how he allowed them to speak about their experience in a way that came across and didn't come across as, uh, you know, um, scripted, in the, in, uh, you know, it came across as this is who these people really are and this is the world they really live in. And, uh, and a lot of them were not actors. They were people he selected to be in these scenes. And, uh, and he edited it in such a way that he allowed their voices to speak. And that's what you got. And that's, yeah. to me, that's genius. Very moving. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I wish more people saw it. <laughs> the one thing I wish for Rob is he was able to make uh, more money making his films, you know? And uh, that's unfortunate that... Uh, but maybe in the new internet age and with things being available more and more, perhaps somebody will pick up his collection of films and stream them and he'll be acknowledged for uh, his, uh, the great work he's been doing for these many years.
We actually already did. We have a deal with a kino lover, and uh, they want to take uh, all of uh, his uh, 40 films. Yeah. They want to start with the fault line, his latest one. That's fantastic. Oh, I know Richard Lorber, so I uh, I did business with him a long time ago. Uh, I think that's wonderful. I mean, yeah. he's, you know, he's, that's, I, I hope a lot more people get to experience his work. He's okay. getting older and, uh, you know, that's his legacy, you know, this kind of filmmaking. And I hope lots of people all over the world get to see it. You know, Robert Young, um, who uh, introduced me to him, uh, was instrumental in uh, the way he set up shots, the way he did handheld work on films, the way he brought you into characters. Uh, and I think uh, Rob just has expanded upon that uh, tradition in his own way. Robert loved uh, Rob, uh, loved uh, Rob Nielsen's work. Uh, part of the reason I was fascinated because he's a brilliant filmmaker. And even though not widely acknowledged, except in the independent community where everybody knows what he created and what he's maintained. And Rob is really the, I think, uh, carries forward that tradition in a brilliant way. I hope more people learn from that. I hope that, that uh, Lorber expands and puts this all makes available in film schools all over the country and all over the world. Uh, research his work and see how it's done. Great. Thank you a lot. It was. Yes. I'm pretty sure Rob gonna love it because you you pointed how he was work with uh, everyday people and how he. Well, psychologically, I think that 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 you know, as a psychologist, I'm, you know, he works with people and lets them reveal their suffering in ways that are genuine, they're authentic, and uh, they don't have to make it up. Yeah. And he's able to capture it. That's his genius. You know, he can capture that quality of emotion, and it comes across. And I think you want to tell real stories, yeah. it's, you have to let people show their pain. I agree. As well as their joy. But, you know, pain's hard for people to look at. I agree. You know, it's, I mean, as a clinician, you know, people usually don't show up to talk to me uh, because that's the thing they woke up in the morning wanting to do. That says, I'm at the top of the food chain. Nobody's, they'd rather go to Tahiti than come and talk about their inner world and how fucked up they are. So, <laughs> That's what I have to say. Okay, it was great. It was, it was really great. Thanks. Great. Thanks I, hope, I hope Rob appreciates it. Yeah, Rob appreciates it.